Hey there, so welcome to my small tutorial. Um, this is the new Paper Artsy topic, which is starting, I believe today, um, is about pattern play. And as most of you know, um, I love to do some pattern play with my stamps. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna explain a few things about how I work and uh, show you how I transfer, or sometimes transfer, my play in my sketchbook into um, journal pages. So we'll go through that. So what I'm gonna be using, I have, I'm gonna put this to one side, I have my sketchbook. So this is a cheap sketchbook. Uh, this is by Royal Langernickel. Um, it was a cheap sketchbook. It didn't cost a lot of money. And lots of you would have seen this when I've done lives. Lots of you would have seen this because I always have a play with this first when I get my stamps. So I can kind of show you if I just flick, this is my tryout book. And very often I play with new stamps most of the time I only play in black and white. Sometimes I do play in colour as well, just to get a feel for what they're gonna look like. I don't worry, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. Um, and that is the whole point of having a book to play with and to play around in the first place. So you can just try things out, try different combinations. I don't worry if things don't stamp properly. You know, sometimes I don't ink my, um, you know, ink my stamps up properly when I'm playing. Um, I don't worry about that because this is just practice. And I would recommend anybody, if when you first get your stamps, just get yourself a sketchbook, get yourself an ink pad. It can just be black and white, doesn't have to be coloured. And just have a play around and just see what your stamps can do. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily... I produce a lot of stamps which... Um, I designed specifically to be pattern play, but you can also use any stamps that you've got and just have a play around and just see, you can kind of see, and just see what they can do, see what patterns you can come up with. Sometimes you get lots of patterns, um, sometimes you don't get very many, it depends on the stamps. Sometimes you get patterns that you didn't even anticipate. So you can kind of see, I really do just go to town in this book and play around and just see what my stamps are gonna lead me to. I have lots going on in this book, okay? These are my new ones, you can see where I've had to play around with those. But you can see, I literally just go into my book and just play, just see what they can do. Every single stamp set, pretty much every single stamp set, I have a play and see what they, they do in my books. So, I'm gonna, let me find a blank page. I'm gonna do something in, uh, I'm gonna do something in coloured, in colour with my new stamps, just because um, I've already got quite a lot of black and white. So let's play and do one lot with some colour. Now, Paper Artsy are really good. I'm going to play, first of all, with TS-068. Now, Paper Artsy are very good in that they trim their stamps really, really close to the edges. So um, once you've stamped, and this is another reason why it's a good idea to have a little sketchbook to practice on. Once you've stamped a couple of times, you kind of get, you kind of um, know how to line your stamps up because they are so close anyway. So let's have a think. Let's start with one of the larger stamps. I'm gonna do this in color. So I'm gonna start with one of the larger stamps. I'm gonna use, let's see, I'm gonna use Distress Oxides. Let's use Distress Oxides for this one. So I'm gonna start with Twisted Citron. You can use any stamp pads you like. I've got colored archivals. I have eyes inks. I've got Distress Pads. You really can use anything that you have. So I'm just gonna go in, and this is what I would do if I'm just playing in my sketchbook. This is what I would do, because I don't worry too much about my, oh, see, just got, just got my, uh, ink everywhere, it doesn't matter because it's my sketchbook. And I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna start stamping a pattern. Now, because these are so closely cut, 
they do a really good job at paper art so they're so closely cut and if you wanted to now I don't but if you wanted to you could draw a straight line down your page and you could draw a straight line down your block that you could then match up okay so you could go down the middle of your stamp once it's on there just with a, a an erasable uh, pen and you could do a straight line down the center and then that will keep you on track I don't tend to do that I don't tend to worry too much if they don't line up perfectly of course if you want to you certainly could there are tricks to it but I tend because this is my sketchbook and not my finished um, product even my finished product to be quite honest most of you know I don't worry too much so I'm just kind of as long as they're roughly lined up roughly lined up I'm not too worried okay so that is my first one let me take that off I'll clean my stamps afterwards so I'm going to go in I think I'll go in with peacock feathers let's pick um, let's see let's pick let's pick that one let's go in with that one so one of the small ones of course like the idea with these particular stamps is there are lots and lots and lots of different options so again these are cut really really close so I don't worry too much I tend to stand up because if I'm standing up I can kind of see around the stamp line it up and stamp and if it's not perfect it doesn't matter okay this is it's it's pretty good it's pretty good they don't always line up perfectly but when you stamp the whole thing in the grand scheme of things it actually doesn't notice if you've not stamped perfectly so don't you know don't get hung up on that so I'm going to try and do kind of a couple of different patterns a couple of different um, ways of using these particular ones let's give that one a clean off a minute so what I might do, using the same one, I like to play with the coloured stamps as well, just to, or the coloured stamp pads, just to get a feel for how they would look in colour. Most of the time, to be honest, I just use my black pad. I'll use my black stamp pad and... Um, and do it that way but what I like about using the coloured pads is you can layer on top of each other as well so even though at the moment I'm kind of lining up to the sides you can layer up a little bit if you're using coloured pads it looks quite cool and I like seeing the different the different patterns you get because you can get a completely different pattern or it can look completely different if you're using colored pads to using just black you'll get a completely different look let's just do these so and as i said i do like to stand up i find i get a better view down onto my project if i stand And you can see these are not perfect they're not lined up perfectly but they still look in you know in the grand scheme of things they look fine so let's give that one a quick clean off let's have a look so let's go for let's pick one of the smaller stamps on there let's go for you know, let's go for that one and let's go for I'm gonna go for picked raspberry let's brighten it up with a bit of pink so I'm going to go in let's ink up my stamp let's see let's go in the middle of that one yep that looks really cool and let's go in I don't worry sometimes I drop my stamps when I'm playing this, this is just a sketchbook this is just my cheap sketchbook 
that I will play and just get an idea, get a feel for what your stamps can do. So I'm going to use lots of different colours, I think, on this one, just because it will help. So you can see there, I've not stamped properly. I slipped with my hand when I stamped, but if you look close, okay, but in the grand scheme, you're not going to see it. You're not going to take any notice of that at all. Okay, so... I might do, might do those as well at the ends. Why not? That's cool. So let's see. I'm thinking. Hmm. Do I want to put something in there? Maybe. Let's grab another small one. Let's see what colours have I got. I'm going to use, and you can mix and match uh, ink pads as well when you're doing this. You know, because it is just your sketchbook, you can mix and match. You can do whatever you like. So let's go in. I'm going to go in with the Wilted Violet. Let's see. I'm going to go in the centre. I'm going to leave that one out because we don't need to use all of those stamps. So let's do that. Let's see, I'm going to go in between as well. Why not? You see it looks very different using all the different colours. But... And I find it's really handy to be, you know, when you are playing, be consistent, go off the page. Even if you can see, I've just stamped the tiniest little part up there. But it does make a difference because you get that consistency. So that's cool. So what I could do as well is I could go, I could leave it like that. That's perfectly fine to leave it like that. What I could do, you can go in with your black. I don't know if I want to actually. I might, do a, I might do a separate one. Do you know what? I might leave that as it is. I quite like that as it is. Let's leave that. So let's, let's move on. Let's do another one. So let's turn the page. Let's do another one. So let's have a look. Let's use Okay, let's use this one. Let's use this one. And we'll do one with that. I'm only going to do I'm only going to do a couple, um, and then I'll show you some samples. So I'm going to do this one with colour as well. So let's get that on there. Let's start with let's start with picked raspberry. see what we can do. Let's see what we can come up with. Okay, nice, like that. Now I'm just playing because I've not, I've done a few patterns with this one, but more to show um, the idea behind the stamps rather than any further pattern play. So let's see what happens. They look very, very different. This looks very different in colour than it looks in black and white, which is what I've done up until now. I just like to play around. Let's see what it does. That's cool. So, what can I do next? What shall I do? Where shall I go with it? Hmm, let's see. This is what I tend to do. I tend to play around. 
do. Although it will work and they'll just overlap just a tiny bit, which is cool. So let's get a block. I like to just see. What I like about the stamps is you can kind of put them down as well and see what they're going to do and how they're going to work. Maybe we'll do something like that. Something like that would be pretty cool. So I'm going to go with the Twisted Citron. Let's go with that. And again, they're cut really close, so it's not too difficult to get a little pattern going on and to get in really close. Once you've stamped once or twice, you really can you do get a feel for your stamps and how close they need to be, what the overlap needs to be. That's cool. That looks good, like that. So let's see, let's grab this one and let's go in with, what one's this one? Peacock feathers. Is it peacock feathers, I think? Yeah, peacock feathers. I might have said Captain Peacock because I do have a habit of calling it Captain Peacock for some reason. I don't know why. So let's go, let's go in there. Let's see what, what it does. You can't go wrong when you're playing in your sketchbook. You actually can't go wrong. You get a feel for how your stamps are going to work. You get a feel for how they will overlap on a pattern. So you can kind of see there they overlap. I'm fine with that. Because now I know if I do this pattern, I know that that's going to happen. Again, I am standing up and stamping. I just find it much easier to be able to look down on my page rather than um, looking sideways on. And sometimes I do, you know, sometimes I'll play. I've got patterns in this book which I absolutely hate. They don't work. Don't like them. But that's the idea of playing. That's the idea of trying them out. See what they do. See what happens. That looks pretty cool. That would look pretty cool down a journal page anyway, I think. What if... Let's have a look. What if... Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my black ink pad. Of course, it doesn't have to be this one. It could be a stamp from another set. But what I like about using coloured ink pads is that you can do the whole black stamping. You can layer up and you can do the black stamping on top and you get a different dimension. So all I'm doing with this is I am just lining the two corners up roughly with the center of the circle. Again, if it is not perfect, then it's not perfect. It doesn't matter. But I quite like that you get this layered look going on. And of course you could go in with coloured pencils, coloured pens as well, and add detail to your patterns. Let's just do this and then we can, we'll have a look. I tend to keep going, a lot of the times I tend to keep going until the point I actually ruin it. And I think, oh, do you know what? I would do that again, but I wouldn't do that step. 
And that's the whole point of having a, a practice book. So that looks pretty cool. Quite like that. I'm liking that with the black. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if I could use this one in the black as well. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Let's see. See what we think. So I'm going to line it up there. So what I'm getting is that area where I've got where I've overlapped by using the black. And centering it. Looking cool. I like that. This side. That's one of the reasons I like playing with the coloured ink pads because you can layer these up with the colours. Obviously, the black, if you just keep stamping black on, over black, you're just going to get a big black mess. You'll just get your ink will be everywhere. It will just lay on top. You won't be able to see anything. But because you're using different colours on this, you do get that. That separation gives a really nice effect, I think. So again, let me do off the page. So let's see. So that would be roughly, roughly there, because it will be roughly lined up with the centre. You can see it makes a difference as well coming off the edge of your page. So line it up. I can see with those they're lined up with that centre. So all I need to do there is just make sure that that is lined up roughly with that centre. And that will work. And as I said, it doesn't need to be perfectly lined up. So I think that looks pretty cool as it is. I could go on, I could do more. As I said, one of the things I could do, so I could now, if I really wanted to, right, so let's have a look at this. If I really wanted to, what I could do is either go in with a pen, go with me, go in with a pen, or I could go in with coloured pencil. So let me just find, let's go in with a, so I could make this stand out from the background. So what I could do, I'm only going to do it on one, just so that you can see. Let me bring you in. What I could do, if I really wanted to, is I could then go in with a coloured pencil. So I've picked, uh, this is a Prismacolor, this is Aquamarine. So, and because I'm using a colour similar to the colours that I've already used. You can see that's going to kind of make that stand out. And I could just do, I don't have to do everything, but I could just pick out just pick out some details. And of course you could use pens as well, you could use your, your Posca paint markers, would work really well. But you can kind of see that, if I bring that back out, you can see that kind of makes that stand out just a little bit more against that background. So that's all I'm going to do with that for a second. I'm not going to do any more. So what I am going to do now, I'm going to just stamp in black and white. I'm just going to do a few patterns for you. I'll do that on, um, I'll speed it up. You don't need to hear me talking about it. You've got the general idea and uh, then we'll come back at the end.
Okay, so I hope I've given you a few ideas with regards to the actual stamping. As I said, don't get too hung up if they're not perfect. If you look at this one that you just saw me do, you can see it's not perfect. Nothing lines up perfectly because I don't pay that much attention. And it doesn't matter because you look at the page as a whole. So if something doesn't line up perfectly, it's not a problem. The more you do, um, the more accurate you will be anyway. So it's all about practice. I know we say that word a lot, but it's all about practice. So um, the one thing that you can use, I, don't, I can't find one, I'm not quite sure where I've put it. The one thing that you can use if you really, um, if you really struggle, I'm kind of looking, I can't find it, it's not here. Um, if you really struggle, you could look out. Wendy Vecchi has got a, um, a stamping device where you can stamp accurately with rubber stamps. So, um, and it's called the, it's called the Make It, Make It platform or something like that. Ha have a look. I'll see if I can find a link to it, but do have a look. Um, because if you really, really do struggle and you really do have a bit of OCD about making sure that things are stamped perfectly, it's a really good device to have. Um, I think I did talk about it briefly in my new release. So this is the purpose of my sketchbook, as I said. So I do lots and lots and lots of different things in my sketchbook. Now, sometimes those things turn into journal pages. Sometimes they don't. It really does just depend um, at the time when I'm playing. So lots of you would have seen this one that I did and I did actually turn that one, let me find it, just to kind of show you how they can work in journal pages. So I did this one, didn't expect it to make that kind of pattern and then I did go in and create this journal page. So let me just move it over so that you can see both. So you can see how it's really valuable to do this kind of play in your journal because it can lead to inspiration for playing in your journal. So I did do this one. Um, something like you would have seen, so you would have seen at the beginning um, that I did, let me see if I can find it. I think I had this at the very beginning of the video. Um, so this one, this was playing with those butterfly stamps and this was then the journal page that I did based on this pattern. So I then played around and this was the journal page that I came up with in my junk journal. So that was that one. Um, I did some play in here using these ones. So this was using those integrated circle stamps and I had a play again in my junk journal and I created this one. So this one um, has been stamped, this is craft card. So it's a piece of craft card. I've stamped with white embossing powder and then these ones are actually 3D. So these have been done separately and then mounted up to create a 3D effect. So you can quite easily go from what you do in this. Um, I think, let's have a look. You can go from what you do in this to actually creating pages with it. So obviously I did these ones um, playing with those circle stamps and then I did create, let me see if I can find it. I've got so many pages dotted around. Um, I think it's in this one. Let me just check. Bear with me a second. I've got so many journals around me with different things in. Let me just double check because I'm not sure. I think it was in an older journal, I'm pretty sure. Not sure. No, nope, not sure. Can't find it now. Loads of journals everywhere. Got no clue which one it's going to be in. But I did a journal page. You would have seen it on my um, cafe page. I did a journal page where I used one of these circles in the middle of it. So it works really, really well. Um, I love playing with the different different stamps and just seeing seeing what they can do. I'll just show you a couple of other journal pages. I'm going to bring this out. A couple of other journal pages that I've done with other stamps. Um, 
just to give you an idea that they you know it can be transferred just because it's playing with pattern it doesn't have to be black and white so this was with one of my older sets um and i repeatedly stamped those into a mandala pattern so that was one of these type sets um i used a mixture of stamps in that one so lots of different ones but created a mandala type pattern with it i love a mandala again pattern play so this one was with one of my older stamp sets which was i think it was a mix of this one and my other set it might have just been this one I'm not 100 percent sure looking but you can see this has been created to make the mandala pattern so you know lots there really are lots and lots of things that you can do that you don't realise until you start playing. So these um, Christmas decoration shapes were made using one of these sets. And only because I'd had to play around with the different orientations did I realise that you could actually make Christmas decorations. So um, that was another one. Um, what else have I got? Oh, my! I've got a few here. So let me just show you these. So... These were some of the patterns that I created using my Egyptian stamp set when I had that. So just repeatedly stamping or stamping in circles. And these are some of the things that I don't realise that I can do until I play in my uh, sketchbook. Again, using the half shapes. So these are half circles, creating different shapes with those. The hieroglyphics, creating different patterns with those. So you can kind of see just repeating shapes. Repeating shapes make the best patterns. That's that one. That one. Let's turn it up that way. That one. This was one where I used the pattern play. You know, I, I created this in my journal. I realised that I could create this butterfly shape in my sketchbook um, and that I could create this kind of repeating pattern. And then I used it to create a journal page with that so it works. These were playing around with these type of stamps and just playing around and seeing what they could do. I have two sets of those um, with different shapes in. So it's just playing around with the shapes. Same with that one, just playing around. These are on black and white, obviously you can do on colour. And then this one was a pattern play with my B stamp set. So my B stamp set had um, has got the hexagons in it. And you can see I've stamped a pattern in black and white and I've also stamped in colour to create a, uh, a journal project. So lots and lots of things that you can do with these um, with these different sets. Um, but I do recommend, highly, highly, highly recommend that you get yourself a cheap sketchbook. It doesn't have to be a sketchbook. I've got a sketchbook, keeps mine all in one place. You could use printer paper, something that's cheap. If you wanna, if you wanna experiment with your stamps, I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage you to use an expensive, expensive paper or an expensive art journal or something like that to do it. You wanna play around in. A book or in paper on paper that is less expensive that's cheap so that you can do it and if it's wrong you know I very often I'm gonna see if I can find some but very often I do stuff and it doesn't work um, you know they don't fit together and I have to play around with how you know how they need to be spaced out to to work things like that I'm gonna see if I can find one because I know because I do it all the time and then I have to so this one when I originally stamped this you can see there's a big gap in between and what I did originally when I started stamping I just started stamping one after the other and then I ended up with a big gap in between what I found works better because if you look you can see that these are not lined up properly what I found is better with these is if I do my 12 o'clock do my six o'clock and then fill in in between. I seem to be able to get a better, um, a better shape with those. A better, you know, it fills up. So this was my second one. So I did this one. You can see it didn't quite work. There was a little bit too much of a gap. Obviously, once I'd done that, I then went on. And obviously, I'm not worrying because it's cheap sketchbook. Doesn't matter. 
did that and then moved on the second time and the second time was much better because I'd made a plan in my head of how I was going to do it um, to get it more even and it seemed to work. So just a little, you know, just a little tip there, but you can see my stamping's not perfect. I don't worry, just play different colours, different stamps. You can pretty much use anything. You know, that one was lots of butterflies and things. It doesn't matter what you use. So I am going to leave you there. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, and I hope that you enjoy the new topic for the pattern play over on the Paper Artsy blog. And I will speak to you very soon. Bye-bye.